Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. As usual, you're with me, your host, Wezi Nyanewa Sosola. I'm so excited today because I would like to talk about dating, my dating experience. How was it like? I'm glad growing up I became a Christian at a very young age. So my Christian beliefs informed this kind of thinking that I had towards dating and relationships. So for me as a Christian, dating was all about finding somebody you are going to marry, finding somebody whom you are going to spend your lifetime with. And it was supposed to be done when you are ready, when you are matured. Now, this made me to be so big on waiting. I was waiting because I said that I'm not yet ready to find this husband. So why should I go into a relationship anyway? Now, as a teen, because of that, I was so reserved. However, when I became a young lady in my early 20s, I started blossoming and I was so I started becoming attractive. Because of that, I started getting so much interest from people of the opposite sex. I started getting so much interest from young men and uh, it kept me thinking that, okay, maybe this is the right time now to find my soulmate. The soulmate that I've been waiting for. Especially that at this point I had finished my diploma and I had also uh, my first job. And I said, okay, let me now start trying this dating experience. Unknowingly to me, my parents also had the same line of thought because they never really talked, told me that my daughter, I want you to get um, to find a man to get married to, no. But they were doing some weird stuff that just kept me thinking some funny things. Like for example, this other time my mom and dad had come over to where I was staying and he, my dad made a certain comment this other day. He said, where is he? Bala kukumba kusanga mwanarume. Baundare ni duangwa river. Basically saying that if you want to find a man, the boundary is the duangwa river. Now in Malawi, we are divided into three main um, regions. The northern region, the central region, and the southern region. So duangwa river lies on, along the demarcation of the northern region and the, southern, and the central region. So my father, being from the northern region, he also wanted me to marry from the north. That's why he was saying that Baundari ni Dwangwa River. But he was disappointed because I ended up marrying somebody uh, from the central region. Yeah, so that is the kind of thinking that these parents had. And the, there were times when my mother, whenever I get a call, she was so keen on knowing who I was talking to, especially when he hears that the voice was the voice of a male. And she used to, to ask, Ninjani Uyo, who is that? Who is that you are talking to? Like she wants to know about my dating life. And uh, I was like, guys, I'm not ready yet to introduce a man to you. What, what is it that you are doing? And this other time, it's like when my parents had gone back to the village, this other day I got a phone call from my sister-in-law saying that, Wazi, mom has sent you to call you. She says when she was there, there was a certain man who was showing interest in you. Now she's finished her investigations. She thinks that the man, that, that man is a noble man and you can go ahead and get into a relationship with him. And I said, what are you talking about? The person you are at the village, how would you be investigating somebody from here? And in fact, what was happening, she was busy calling people, initiating investigations, uh, going to, uh, for people, people from the workplace of this guy were being sent maybe to investigate him, whatever they were doing, I don't know. Then she was telling me that you can now get involved with this man. I was like, guys, I'm not even attracted to the man. What are you doing? <laughs> so such funny things like that. But... For me, guys, just an advice for parents. I just want to give you uh, a little scripture from the book of Titus, chapter 2, <clears throat> starting from verse 3 to 5. It talks about the roles of parents. What should mothers and what should fathers do? So it's basically about parents being so um, reverent in their behavior and they should teach their children how to be better spouses, how to be better mothers, how to be better uh, wives or husbands. That is the role of parents. So 
I just want to give this advice to parents that when you have a, a child, give them leverage, give them some space, give them a chance to believe in them that you've raised them well and they can make a better decision of finding the man of their choice. That's my advice to parents from the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 3 to 5. However, for me, um, I had my own list of must-haves, deal-breakers, that the man that I'm going to get into a relationship with should have this. Without this, I'm not going to get into a relationship with this man. And the first of, of, of those must-haves was that, obviously, I have to be attracted to the man. There has to be chemistry. I mean, without attraction, without chemistry, how can a relationship work? So that was the first one on my list. And the second from that was that the person should be a Christian. Because I wanted somebody, not just any gym and jack who claims that I go to church or I was brought out in a Christian, in a Christian household, you know. I wanted somebody with a good standing with the Lord. Somebody who would challenge me to be a better person, to be a better Christian, to have a better relationship with the Lord. That is the kind of man that I was looking for. And if you are not any of this, it was a deal breaker. I'm sorry, my friend. A relationship between me and you is not working out. And the other thing that I had in my mind was that the person that I'm going to get into a relationship with should have a vision, a visionary man. I, I didn't need one to have money. I didn't need one to have a job, no. But what I wanted is somebody who knows what they want they have a vision, they know what they want, they know how to get there. They know how to succeed in life, they have it in mind. Somebody I could enter in a dialogue with, in an intelligent discussion, somebody who would in, challenge my thought and intellect. That was one thing that I was also looking at. And the last thing on my list, I was saying that the person that I'm going to get in a relationship with should know his purpose as a person. What is his purpose as a man? Because as a man, God has made you to be head over me, head of a woman, basically. So if you are my head, you have to know your purpose, that I will be a leader. This is how I'm going to lead my family. I want to be a mentor to my children. I want to be a good husband. So you have to know your purpose that as a man, God has given you responsibility. God has given you this leadership and he trusts you and you can lead a family. Which requires maturity and it requires wisdom. So these were must-haves for me. The first one was that one, I should be attracted to the person. There should be chemistry and it should be a Christian because if in the Bible, it says that you don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. In the book of 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, it says that do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? So for me, you should be a Christian. If not, no relationship. Then a visionary and also somebody who knows their purpose. Those were my, my main line of, my main uh, must-haves for me. Yeah, guys, um, then finally, I, I, I was lucky enough, I found the man that I was looking for. He was a Christian. Of course, he was not from the northern region. He turned out to be a chewa, and then my dad ended up liking the guy because he was somebody of a good character. And uh, because of that, he was so happy um, uh, for me also. Yeah, and I've got a final verse that I would like to share with you, study, coming from the book of First Peter 5 verse 5. It's showing that likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yeah, so this is what the word of God is saying, that you younger people, you should be submissive to your elders in as much as i have said that parents should not intrude in their lives uh, children's lives that they should give them space trust that they have raised them well and that the children who can make the right choice of the husband who is right for them 
but also younger people we should not necessarily they really cast the parents away but we should be able to get advice from them as it is saying in first peter 5 verse 5 that young people you should submit to your elders whatever they are saying let us listen to them the elders because they are wise they have been here for longer uh, than ourselves because wisdom is not learned in a classroom you might be of higher education, you might have a better job than your parents, but wisdom is learned through life experience. It's not learned through the classroom. So our parents, they know much, they have experienced much in their lives. So we should be reverent to them and we should submit to them as the elders. Trust that their judgment, that they, all they need for us is for the, the, the best. So guys, that is my part one of what I wanted to share with you on relationships. I, I hope this has encouraged somebody. I hope somebody has been informed of the kind of characteristics to be looking uh, when you want to get into a relationship. Thank you guys. I'll come back again with the part two of my dating experience. Stay blessed. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and also press that like button. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Bye.